Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So, you're looking at the outside of the clam that goes on the front of the supernova reactor. And for a very, very long time, I have been absolutely keen to have a look at the inside surface of this reactor. Now, the reason I wanted to look in there is because I imagined that if you considered the plasma balls that are in the fused quartz uh, reactor vessels that are sitting inside this aluminium vessel uh, are producing exotic vacuum objects as I think they should be, then this reactor, long before I got it, ran a large number of experiments and in theory that would be throwing out a large number of exotic vacuum objects and that these should impact on the aluminium, this is aluminium, uh, right here, and uh, aluminium seems to be very, very susceptible when impacted with exotic vacuum objects. So I was thinking when I was taking this off the other day in the last video that I shared with you, would I see any signs of uh, impacted exotic vacuum objects on the inside of the reactor? Well, I was absolutely stunned. Um, and I showed this in the last video. There are areas, you see that mottled area, and then there's a mottled area over there, and then there's a mottled area over there. Um, sure enough, uh, there's some very specific areas. And in fact, these are the areas I would probably most likely take my um, dental x-rays here and put them on the outside with a uh, magnet uh, in place. And... Uh, that I would have some here uh, opposite this sort of dark area which seems to be mostly impacted and then some in other areas where there is less impacts uh, to look for dark evos escaping from the reactor. But anyway, I was so I woke up uh, this morning thinking there's one thing I want to do today and I want to look at the inside of uh, the surface of the supernova reactor here to see what I can find. Well, I can tell you, it's just beautiful. And just like um, in some of the other samples that I've been looking at, the very largely affected areas, and uh, uh, are, there's so much going on there. For instance, when you're looking at the Amasa plates, uh, when there's a very large affected area, or when you are looking at um, the inside quartz of the Lion reactor, it's not the most affected areas that are most interesting. It's on the periphery. Uh, because there's there's less overlaying uh, uh, pits of exotic vacuum object hit. Anyway, I, I you know there are many 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 examples I can show you, um, but I just I'm going to start you off with one that I, I've just found, um, and there, there are hundreds, if not many thousands, on the inside of this reactor surface, but uh, this one's just beautiful. So I'm going to start by showing you this. So here is this uh, impact spot, uh, as I call it, and it is a classic kind of size for an exotic vacuum object, uh, which is 500 microns, so the radius there is 250 microns. And uh, what you are seeing actually here is the machining lines of the uh, aluminium from the tool that um, cut the inside radius out inside of the supernova reactor. And you can see that this exactly is a circle. Um, it's absolutely beautiful um, uh, circle. And you have the petals uh, with regular kind of uh, areas around it, a very defined width all the way around. And uh, you know, it would be just wonderful to be able to put this under uh, some form of analysis, cut this out and, and, you know, see what you have in here, see what's out here, uh, see what is here. Is this uh, some <laughs> diamond uh, that's been deposited? Is it, you know, in here is this aluminium oxide? I don't know. This is refractive material. Um, so it's definitely clear. Uh, is it amorphous crystalline or crystalline? Um, these are all questions that would be great to have answers to. But uh, what's just wonderful is how you see the lines of the uh, tool 
that made this and this has come in and it's just hit here and it's just made this perfect perfect mark now um in other examples which i can show you uh where they've ha had a less direct impact they've sort of come at an angle they're they're, they're not so perfectly circular and in other cases, it, it just seems to be whatever they were carrying, they've splatted on the surface or they've caused the aluminium to splat. Um, but, uh, you know, before I even get to do some runs uh, with this uh, reactor, this intuition that I had uh, to say that, well, it must have been creating EVOs uh, for it to be doing the transmutation. And so I expect to see something going on on the inside of the uh, aluminium and it's just it's just wonderful i think i could spend a very long time just studying the inside of the reactor with the microscope anyway i'm gonna uh, run through the focusing here so you can see as i go through that focusing there and uh what i can actually do is i can i can turn the various lights on uh around so you can see how it refracts differently with with different uh uh, lights on the uh, digital microscope, the DynoLight Edge 3, so you can get an idea of how that works in real time. It's just, it's just so beautiful. I feel so honoured to be able to show you this, really. Um, <laughs> It's uh, more than I could have possibly hoped for, just a few seconds looking at this. Um, and so, so sometimes it's not always good to have all of the lights on at once, because look, you see here, it, you kind of lose an understanding of what's actually going on, and you can't see how it's interacting very well. But uh, I'm going to turn this one, this quadrant on over here. Uh, and change the focus so it's kind of midway in the centre. And now I'm going to change the uh, specularity, the the um, uh, polarising filter. So if I turn the polarising all the way down here, you get much less specular. Um, and so you get kind of just an impression of where maybe the different elements are. Okay, and... The interesting thing to note when you're looking at it in this mode, uh, you see that you have the central circle. In fact, there's a, another kind of spotty area in the center. Then you have the radius here. And then you also have this much larger radius going on out here where it's, it's done something different at this radii. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's just breathtaking. <laughs> We are literally on the verge of a completely new science. Um, when I say new, it's not really new, it's eternal. But, uh, you know, you, when, when you look at this, it makes me think of uh, those kind of geodes that you get, um, you know, dug up with amethyst in. It, were those geodes that you sort of get from Argentina or whatever with amethyst in or quartz, were well, they instantaneously produced by a large exotic vacuum object inside the ground? Uh, I mean, it's just, it boggles the mind to think of these things. Um, but yeah, I mean, what you've got in this uh, reactor is a thing that um, creates ball lightning. Uh, ball lightning, it would appear, is uh, a self-organized cluster of exotic vacuum objects. And, you know, when they blow up or when they become unstable, they throw out fractal subsets of themselves. And, you know, maybe this is carrying carbon that is extracted from the charcoal or, or whatever it is that's put in there. And it's become diamond or, 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 or I don't know. You know, there, there's diamond in Chalani's work. There's diamond in, uh, would appear in uh, the uh, plates of Amaza. There was diamond in Leclerc. Uh, so many people are seeing the synthesis of diamond and there's good reasons for it. It's, it's a good packing density and, and a, a arrangement of uh, uh, carbon. Um, so I'm going to now move this from uh, this particular way of looking at it. Uh, to looking at it uh, with uh, the polarizing filter much less applied. So you see at this point, 
you get a nice combination between uh, seeing the where the different sort of elements may be. Uh, you kind of lose the outer ring, um, but you, you get to see the, the ridges of the cut line of the machining. Okay, so I'm gonna, so that's that's with full polarization, and then pull it the other way. And here you you get to see that this it really is very glassy this substance here, and sometimes when you've got the polarizing filter completely off, it's actually better to dial down the light a bit, the intensity of the light, and then you can actually see refraction going on in this ring of deposited material here. It's just breathtaking. You also get, at this point, you get to see that, you know, you've got this area around here, then you've got this area, and then you've got this, is it a depression? I don't know. Um, maybe if we can turn the various lights on, we can get a better understanding of it. It's definitely, this, this looks like it's raised onto the surface. I can't help thinking that this looks like the lines coming around uh, a circle that you saw on those micrographs of Matsumoto. Really, it just looks like it. Um, now, actually, with this look, is this a shadow? It might be a shadow, actually. Uh, it does look like almost <laughs> that it's actually uh, depressed into it. So. What I'd love to have is a laser microscope looking at this so that we maybe we can see uh, if this is going in or out or maybe it's going in and out uh, and so forth. What elements have we got in the center here? Is this aluminium or is it something more, more interesting going on? Um, don't know. And it certainly looks to be some sort of change between the outside here and the inside. Uh, there, it's just... And this is just one of thousands on this sample. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so if I dial that down, you can really get an idea what's going on here. So, you know, I, I think probably I'm going to spend a, a bit of time looking at this um, inside of the outer clamshell of the reactor and share it with you. Why not? Uh, I think we can learn a lot. So let's let's just put some measurements here. Dial that up a bit so we can see what we're looking at. I'm going to go to a mix between specular and non-specular. So that gives us a good idea of what we're looking at. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so we'll leave it here. Uh, this is actually with uh, several, a couple of quadrants on. Um, so I can, okay, so I've got all the quadrants on and I've got dialed the light down and this, because it's got the polarizing filter fully applied, um, you don't see much 3D, you just get an impression of where the different elements are. Um, so I'm going to just measure the various parts here. So it's approximately radius 160 on the internal there. Then I'm going to measure the. Uh, oh, that's. I've not done that very well, have I? <laughs> I chose the wrong one, didn't I? Let's uh, maybe remove that one. Uh, I'm going to choose this one. And it's just a little bit easier when you're starting from the center. So that one there is around about 500 and I'm going to do it again 
Uh, can you allow me to do that? Let's see. The outer ring here. Is that the outer ring? Looks a bit like it, doesn't it? Okay, so let's see what we have there. The outer ring is maybe a thousand microns. It's more, I think it's it's uh, 1,060 microns. The inside is that 500 microns and the very inside is uh, 320 microns diameter. And then have we, have we got one even further in from the center of that? It's kind of like this area in here. Uh, yeah, so maybe if I use my finger, it's a little bit easier to follow. But, um, I didn't do a very good job of that. <laughs> Move that into the center. Is that about right? I don't know. No, I think I've made that a little bit big. It's a little bit big for that center bit, so I'll just pull that down a bit. And so that's about 150 in the center there. Anyway, you, you get the idea. Um, so if I put those various rings on, and then I change the uh, polarizing filter, you can see how that changes our look here. So I'm going to turn the other quadrants off and dial up the light. There we go. So uh, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to share a whole series of images uh, for your pleasure. And I will look uh, more and more at the inside of this reactor, which is just a thing of beauty. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.